All right, guys, welcome back. Today, we're going to be talking about magnets and magnetism. We uh, finished our last lesson on uh, electric current, and this is going to uh, relate to magnetism in a very really interesting way with our next unit after this, electromagnetism, because these two things are together. All right, so first, I have some quick examples of magnets. All right, you can tell my wife is a huge Disney fan, but this is your normal refrigerator magnet. But what we're going to look at today are some really, really powerful magnets, guys. These are really, really strong. They're really hard to separate, and they're really dangerous because they can actually pinch your skin. All right, and I'm not joking you. They will hurt you if you're not careful. Anyways, let's get going. Let's talk about the history of magnetism. Yes, yeah, early history, people back in the day, they thought this bad boy was magical. And magnets don't just look like this. Magnets come from the earth uh, in a form called magnetite. People noticed that these stones were attracted to each other, and they thought, well, how is that happening? It has to be magic. All right, obviously, it's not magic. It's science. But they didn't know that yet. The first use of magnets was uh, something called a lodestone. It essentially was an early compass because magnets are always trying to point north. So they were using these lodestones as early rough compasses. All right, but let's talk about what a magnet is and what makes it a magnet. Magnets have poles, okay? Like the, you know, poles of the earth, north pole and south pole. Every magnet has two poles. Like I said, a north and a south, okay? This is really, really similar to uh, static and our electricity unit because like poles repel and unlike poles attract. That sounds very similar to, yes, like charges repelling, opposite charges attracting, okay? So that means if you have two norths or two souths, they will repel each other. If you have a north and a south, they will attract each other. And right now, all these magnets are stacked on top of each other, acting as one larger magnet because they're lined up north to south. If I were to split these apart, okay, guys, right now they're attracted in between my fingers, okay? That is a north to south attraction. If I flip these ones over and try to reconnect them, they, they, they don't want to go. Okay, and I wish you could see this in person. All right, they are forcing themselves away from each other. And I wanna show you just how strong these are. So right now, these again wanna repel. But I'm just gonna move some of these around and watch, watch the ones in my right hand. Okay, as I move these ones around, it's gonna spin the ones in my right hand so they can attract each other. That is not me doing that, that is all the magnets trying to attract themselves back to each other. Like so, so again, like pulls repel, opposite or unlike poles attract. Okay, guys, here's your basic magnet. Okay, this is a, like a bar magnet. You probably played around with in elementary school. Every magnet has a north pole and a south pole. Okay, every single magnet has to have a north pole and south pole. And you might say, but Mr. Waller, what happens if you were to cut this magnet in half? Well, guess what? Now you get two magnets and this north now has a south right here and this south now has a north right there. Every magnet has a north and a south. If you were to split them again, you'd get four magnets and so on. Okay, let's talk about a magnetic field going back to that uh, bar magnet we have here, north and south. The way a magnetic field works is it is a force. It is this invisible field that you cannot see with your own eyes, and they always travel from north. They go up like this, and I'm putting arrows to show direction, and they loop back around. to the south, like so, okay? This is your magnetic field going from north to south, and they actually extend out further. And so on. The stronger the magnet, the stronger the magnetic field. The stronger the magnet, the larger the magnetic field, like this magnet on the back of this Disneyland uh, refrigerator magnet is much much weaker than these really powerful magnets So this magnet in my right hand has a much larger and stronger magnetic field than this guy in my left hand Okay, let's talk about Earth's magnetic field and you're probably saying Earth's magnetic field I didn't know Earth has a magnetic field. It does. I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit so you can see this a little better Yes, that is the Earth right there. Okay, we've got uh, Antarctica We've got South America, North America, Africa, Europe, and the North Pole up there guys It's not called the North Pole just because it's north It's not called the South Pole just because it's the South Pole. Those are actual geographic locations But there is a magnetic location both the magnetic North and magnetic South Pole are close to geographic North and South but they're a little bit off, okay? 
So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more here. Okay, the Earth is the largest magnet you will ever see. You look down on the ground, you're looking at the world's largest magnet because it is the world. So our magnetic field starts from the north and loops back around to the south, like that. And the Earth being such a large magnet, it has a very, very large magnetic field. And I apologize for my arrows, I'm not the best at this. And it extends really far out into space. And what it does is it protects the Earth from solar radiation, okay? You can't see this with your own eyes, but it's there. As solar radiation, let me zoom out a bit, as solar radiation is traveling from the sun, it strikes our magnetic field and is reflected back, it's bounced back. If our magnetic field wasn't there protecting us, we would get burnt to a crisp, okay? Life could not survive. You can see some of this magnetic field and solar radiation in action in two spots way up here, way down here, in the form of the northern lights and the southern lights, what's called the aurora borealis and the aurora australis, okay? If you've ever seen the northern lights or seen pictures or videos, it's those green, beautiful lights that flash green, almost blue to a purple. That is the solar radiation interacting with the North Pole and our South Pole being reflected back. It's pretty interesting. If you uh, don't know what I'm talking about, go to YouTube and type in northern lights uh, video or southern lights video. It's pretty cool stuff. All right, but again, the Earth has a massive magnetic field, okay? So where do magnetic fields come from? It's all due to electron spin. All right, going back to chemistry, we have our atom with our uh, nucleus with protons and uh, neutrons right there, and then we have our electrons orbiting the nucleus. And I'm just gonna draw what you probably think of when you think of an atom. Our first shell has two, and then our outside shell has more than two, and so on. Right here, it's a really simple atom. This is probably what you're used to seeing in chemistry, though. This isn't super accurate. These electrons don't just spin in these circles. They spin all over the place. In chemistry, it's more of a probability field. It's like a cloud of this electron being almost at all places at once because they're so small and they're so fast. Okay, so it's not like this. It's not what you see, you know, in, you know, your, your poster. It's actually all over the place. They're spinning wildly, wildly, all over, okay? And this electron spin leads us to magnetic domains. And you're probably thinking, well, you didn't really explain the electron spin, okay? We have two materials here, non-magnetic and magnetic, okay? And I broke these materials into sections here. In our non-magnetic, I'm gonna draw some arrows, and we see the arrows pointing in that direction, in that direction, in this direction, over here, and then it's gonna go down. You'll notice that they're pointing in different directions, all right? And something that is magnetic, you will have your arrows, which indicate electron spin, they're all pointing in the same direction, okay? So visually, you see this is all over the place. This is lined up. Going back to electron spin, when your electrons are spinning in different directions, like so, you're non-magnetic. When they're spinning in the same direction, you're magnetic. Not everything can be a magnet. Most things um, that are magnetic have iron, cobalt, nickel. Those are um, very, very natural magnets and you can increase their magnetism by putting them in magnetic fields. But when electrons are lined up, it's magnetic. When they're not, it is non-magnetic. Okay, let's go back to the Earth and you're probably wondering, well, you already explained the Earth, but how is the Earth actually a magnet? Okay, I'm gonna zoom in a bit here, and this is not drawn to scale, but I have the crust of the Earth. This is where the continents in our ocean is. We have the mantle, all that area right there. That is magma, not lava, but magma. And then we have the core, and I drew arrows to show the core is spinning. The core is actually made of two parts, the inner core and the outer core. They're made out of uh, mostly nickel and iron, which again are natural magnets. Because they're spinning around each other, they produce a magnetic field, all right? And again, here's north. Here south, we have our magnetic field originating from the core going out like that. If the core ever stopped turning, which it won't until billions of years from now when the Earth dies out and loses a bunch of energy, but if the core were to stop turning, our magnetic field would disappear. There's a really terrible sci-fi movie out there called The Core. It's about what happens when the Earth stops spinning. If you get a chance, YouTube the trailer. It's from uh, 
way back in the early 2000s. It's terrible. And what do they do to solve the problem? They send this special train that can go through Mantle and they put nuclear bombs around the core to get it going again. Again, terrible movie. All right, so ways to ruin a magnet, guys. Two main ways. You can heat them up or you can smash them with high force, high impact. These magnets right here, they are very, very powerful. And here to show you a demonstration of how powerful they are. Okay, let's see. Uh, uh, uh. Let's see that. Very, very powerful. If I were to heat these up with a blowtorch, or I were to put them in a uh, in an oven and bake them for a while, or put them, you know, uh, just under a high heat source, they would be ruined. If I were to take these and impact them with a hammer or something like that, smash them up, I would ruin the magnet. But why? It goes back to our domains here. They're spinning all in the same direction. When you smash them or heat them up, you cause those electrons to go in different directions, therefore losing its magnetic properties. So two main ways, heating them up, smashing them. All right, guys, we have a magnetic force formula here, a little bit of math. F equals Q times V times B. Well, F, force. What's our unit for that? The Newton, okay? Q, going back to electricity, Q is charge. Our unit for that is the Coulomb. V, velocity. Going back to our very first unit of linear motion and our unit is meters per second. And then B is something brand new. It stands for field strength and our unit is Tesla's, like the car, which got its name from Nikola Tesla, the inventor, which uh, you might remember I talked a little bit about in uh, our electricity unit. Okay, guys, a couple more uses for magnets besides your fridge, locks, okay? Locks that you would see not in your house, but like in a prison or somewhere very high security. You'd have really powerful magnets like so that you can't separate them. So you're trying to pull the door open. You're running a current through these magnets, causing them to work. When you want to unlock it, you turn off the current and then you can separate your magnets. Okay, so very, very powerful locks. You have trains and you're probably wondering, well, what do you mean by trains? Trains are normal trains that you see don't use magnets, but uh, there are some trains that float, okay, on their track. They don't actually have wheels. They float using like charges. So these want to attract, again, if I flip these around, they repel. So this could be our track, this could be our train, and it would float on top, almost frictionless, okay? And then you would have magnets running along the bottom, pulling it, okay? So some trains don't have wheels at all, they float using magnets. Roller coasters, all right? If you've ever been to Fiesta, Texas and ridden the Poltergeist, the Poltergeist uses magnets Okay, most roller coasters, you know, the ones I'm talking about, the old ones, you go up a hill, you reach the hill, and then you go down, woo, right? That's due to potential energy turning into kinetic energy, okay? That's your old school roller coaster. But the Poltergeist has a series of magnets in a order sequentially from beginning to end that turn on here, 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 and so on to the end, pulling you rapidly so you accelerate super quick. Um, all using magnets. And the last one is money. And you're probably wondering, well, how is there a magnet in money? There isn't, but they use a special ink that has a little bit of iron in it. And most printer ink has iron in it, but this has a different level of iron in it because iron is a natural magnet. And let's see if this will work today. My hands are a little damp, so it might have uh, messed with the bill and the magnets work in here with a little bit of static and stuff like that, but let's see. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's really minimal. Let's zoom in right about there. A little bit of movement. Actually, let's try it this way. I'm gonna try my best not to shake the bill. Look at that. Magnetic ink in there. All right, so those are some uses for magnets besides, you know, your refrigerator. And one last thing I wanna show you guys. Okay, I know this video is going on a little bit, but let's make it interesting here. I wanna show you again the strength of these magnets. So I can separate these bad boys apart really, well not easily, but they wanna to pull together, right? So I'm gonna leave one set of magnets on top of my table. I'm gonna take the other set and I'm going to put them under the table, all right? And I am moving the magnets on top of the table by moving the magnets underneath the table. This is a thick wood table, but this is how strong the magnets are, all right? I am moving them around 
with the bottom set of magnets and I can actually make them flip by flipping the magnets in my hand. Watch. It's pretty cool stuff. That's how strong these guys are. And we talked about magnetic fields earlier. Let me get back to that real quick. Talked about magnetic fields like this, right? Well, I want you to actually see a magnetic field. We're going to visualize it, okay? It's no longer going to be invisible. So, remember this diagram, north going to south making this looping pattern. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little piece of cardboard and I put some duct tape on the side to, to help me out, okay? What I have here is iron dust, okay? This is little bits of metal that are shaved apart, okay? And it's literally like dust. If you were to breathe this in, it would actually rust a little bit in your nose from the moisture, okay? So I'm just going to sprinkle it. And if you've ever played with one of those old school, I think they're called woolly woolly toys where you can draw a mustache and facial hair using magnets, same type of stuff. But again, this is dust, okay? It moves around like that. I'm going to take these magnets, which are very, very powerful, and I'm going to place them underneath the mag I'm sorry, underneath the iron, and I'm going to show you our magnetic field. First, just watch this, watch. Oh, look at that, okay? That shape you're seeing that's moving around, I'm spinning my magnets, we can see our north pole and our south pole. All right, and as I move them around, the shape stays the same. I'm gonna to try to gather all of my iron together by moving my magnet apart. All right, look at that. So I have one side of the magnet like so, okay, just this top end, and I'm moving it around. Okay, moving it around like that. It's pretty neat. All right, and I'm gonna do it sideways like this. I'm not gonna move it. And now I'm gonna spin it in my hand like I said, all right. So here is our magnetic field. You can see our north pole and our south pole. And so I move it around, gathering up. Look at that. Isn't that cool? So I'm going to try to gather it all up. Look at this. Come on. I wish I could see this in person. I wish I was in class demoing this for y'all because it's much cooler in person. All right. And then I remove the magnet and it goes back to normal. Okay, I have to keep these separate with this cardboard, otherwise all this dust will get stuck on here and it's impossible to remove. All right, anyways, guys, that is our little video on magnetism. I hope you took something away from this. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I'm gonna put a set of notes out there. Please go over the notes and be familiar with this because this is our brand new unit. Have a good one, guys. Bye.